Okay, we're going to go through between uh, myself and, and uh, Remy Kandel, we're going to go through the HMP, um, kind of more of a technical focus to give you an idea on kind of the steps you go through with the development project in the HMP. Um, we'll go through a project example and show you kind of how it all works. Um, okay. So this is just, you know, essentially we're, we're here in the technical focus, so we're looking at the, um, the section on the HMP. So pretty much what we're going to go through is um, kind of where the HMP criteria is applicable. I know I talked a little bit about that this morning. Um, we're going to go through on how you select and size your hydrologic controls, and we'll be doing that by using the South Orange County hydrology model. So really. Uh, innovative tool um, to help developers as well as plan checkers understand if, if uh, their, the criteria has been met. We'll then go through, I talked a little bit about the triad assessment and um, how you evaluate sediment. Um, then we'll look at uh, alternative compliance and then we'll go, like I, like I said, go through a, a mini case study. So, um, hopefully people can read that. Um, so this is the flow chart in the HMP. So this will help developers understand, is their project subject to the HMP requirements? So obviously, step one, is it a PDP? Um, then you're going down to uh, the next step is, is proper energy dissipation provided? So for outfalls from priority development projects um, into stream network, we want to make sure that regardless that you have properly designed outfall so that you're not um, getting any erosion um, from that outfall. Um, the next, so, um, so those are essentially those questions. You're going through those two steps, um, you know, PDP as defined within the permit, and then your properly designed outfall, um, making sure that it's essentially in accordance with the 2000, uh, 2000 OC Flood Control District Design Manual. So. So the next question that you go through is, does the project directly discharge to an exempt system? So like I mentioned this morning, what an exempt system is, is still in discussion. Um, so the HMP will change based on what the final agreement is between the county and uh, the regional board. Um, but you're essentially going through that and identifying, okay, for right now, all the only exempt systems are like I mentioned this morning, if you're discharging directly to an underground storm drain that goes right into the ocean or a bay, or a concrete line system all the way from um, the point of discharge to the ocean or bay, and that's concrete line, both bed and bank. So you're looking at those. Um, so again, the exemptions that we're trying to um, rectify here is the large river exemption. Um, again, that's uh, drainage area of 100 square miles and a 100 year design storm of 20,000 CFS. Um, so right now in, uh, well in, in South Orange County we only have um, essentially two systems that would meet those criteria and that's San Juan Creek and that's from Casper Park Road so up in the ranch plan area all the way down to the Pacific Ocean. San Mateo Creek from Nickel and Tanaka Canyons all the way to the ocean. Um, we're still hoping engineered channels might be a part of this. We're going to still push that argument that um, there is no impact based on the design of those channels. We'll see where that goes. Um, I, I, between these two, we'll probably get the large river, but the engineered channels, um, the ship might have sailed on that one. Um, we're also going to still push on the in-stream flood control projects um, as well as the, uh, the stream restoration projects. So um, uh, we'll, we'll see where that, where that goes. So the next one is, um, does the project discharge to a concrete line system? So this may change depending upon if it's concrete line and the larger exemption or engineered channels. But for right now, this is what essentially compliance is. So for all of essentially the red areas, they are discharging to essentially either a concrete line system or a store, an underground storm drain system that either discharges to a concrete line system or discharges directly to the ocean. So all of this area, and we've, we have these maps on the, uh, the Orange County website, ocwatersheds.com, all of those areas are 
exempt. Now, I want to make sure that people understand that these, these maps are for planning purposes only. It's really up to um, each development site to essentially map their discharge, identifying what storm drains is going from and to to get to that exempt system. So, um, so anyway, um, so the steps that you would go through to identify that, these are all the questions that, um, and the table of, of an example of what you would put in the WQMP to identify that your system is exempt. So you would identify what drainage system it is, you would identify the capacity of that drainage system. Um, you're looking at, um, you know, what the system is essentially made of. Is it made of that concrete lining or is it just engineered? And depending upon the results of the regional board, this, this will determine what com compliance really is. And then you're looking at the susceptibility of that drainage system um, and then if it is truly exempt through that system. So it's really a matter of, yeah, you look at the maps, but you have to go through these steps as well. Okay, so this is an example um, as well. And basically we want kind of written documentation walking through what system you're going through, but then also we want visible documentation. So you're going to, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to use those maps that we've developed and you're going to modify that exhibit identifying where your uh, prior year development project site is. So this is an example of a site in San Clemente. Um, this is Prima de Sheca. This site is here. It's discharging into a storm drain system here and then that storm drain system connects with a concrete line channel that discharges all the way up to the ocean. So, on face, this would, be, um, this would be an exempt system if you're just looking at the map, but the project needs to go in and visibly identify that this is actually the case. Okay, so once you've gone through all that, if it is exempt, then you're off the hook. You're, uh, if it goes to a concrete line system, then you're exempt. If not, well, now you have to go through and implement the hydro modification controls and go through the SACA model and identify what kind of controls you have to put in and what their sizes would be. So you're implementing part one, which is the hydrologic criteria of the HMP criteria. Um, again, that number is essentially that you are uh, mimicking the pre-development conditions um, for flow duration matching for uh, essentially the naturally, naturally occurring conditions from 10% of the two-year event up to the 10-year event uh, within 10%. And you're using the model to essentially, it's an iterative process, and Remy will go through that in a little bit more detail, but you're going through that process, putting in more BMPs or more hydrologic source controls to essentially get that mitigated flow to less than or equal to the pre-developed flow. The next step you'll go through is you go through the sediment um, analysis. So again, going through kind of the triad approach, you're going through um, your evaluation of is your site a source of bed sediment material within your downstream receiving water? Um, if so, you're avoiding those areas. Um, on site, so looking at those first and second order streams and developing your site around those streams. If that's infeasible, there's an opportunity to bypass that, recreating uh, a sediment supply bypass or recreating streams on site. It gets very hard to do so. And if you can't do that, there is a, a way to go through an alternative modeling approach um, and identify that your site is not a source of sediment. Okay, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Remy, who's going to go through the details of the model uh, as well as the triad approach.